right guys, so we are back in the car and we are headed back to Putnam Park Road Course. I'm super excited to get the car back on the track. Now as you guys should be aware by now, I've done several mods to help improve the performance of the 340 because at my last track day there were two big issues that I was trying to deal with. One is the car wasn't very eager to turn. It would turn okay, but when I really needed it to rotate, especially on a turn that had you know, a decreasing radius, it was extremely difficult to get that last little bit of rotation to get me you know, out of the turn. And the other thing was I just had to be extremely patient. Everywhere I went, I had to be extremely patient and diligent with my inputs, especially coming out of turns. I couldn't get on the gas too early, otherwise it would spin the inside wheel and stuff like that. So those are the two things that I really wanted to improve. I wanted the car to rotate better and I wanted to be able to get on the gas earlier and just make sharper movements so that the car can respond more quickly. So with that in mind, you guys should have seen the modifications that I've made by now. If not, check out all the old DIYs. At this point, I'm several weeks behind on posting videos, so hopefully by now everything has been posted. But for anybody that's new, I'll just do a recap of everything that we've done to the car so far. Now, as always, for everybody that's new to the channel, I create these videos to help keep you updated on the latest developments in our community, as well as discuss technical topics so that we have a better understanding of how our engines work. So if you're interested in more videos like that, be sure to subscribe because there will be a lot more coming out in the future. So the first and probably most important update that I've done is I installed an M Performance LSD. And this is really going to help me get out of turns quicker, allow me to get on the throttle sooner, and hopefully prevent that inside wheel from spinning every time I try to accelerate out of a turn. Because that was by far the most frustrating thing, especially some of the turns at this track are extremely fun. You can kind of get that slingshot effect if you time your throttle right, and so that's what I'm looking for. Whereas before, I really just had to be patient, just carry speed through the turns, wait until the track was extremely straight, then I could get back on the throttle. So that was just extremely frustrating. We don't want to have to deal with that anymore. And hopefully that'll help fix that issue. And the other thing was my H&R sway bars. And this is going to help me not have to be as patient going through turns because the same way that I had to wait to get on the throttle, I also had to wait for the car to settle in the turn. So with turns coming really sharp, I would have to be really patient, kind of take them a little bit wide realize the car is just going to rock a little bit there's no way around it and then after it's settled then I could get on the throttle and accelerate and keep up speed so this should hopefully keep the car more stable so I can go through the turns a lot more quickly and make you know the maneuvers I need to to get through the turns and that should just you know make it more fun overall I mean who wants body roll right if I can limit body roll with the front and rear sway bars I think that's a win-win now the last thing that I did is I installed camber plates, which I don't think I made a DIY for that, but I just put millways on there. It's the same ones that I have on the 440 and they worked fine, but I really wanted more front camber because before on the stock suspension setup, there's no camber adjustment at all. So I was stuck at about 1.6 degrees of camber. Now with the M millway camber plates, I'm able to get over two degrees of camber so i'm super excited to take advantage of that because the car has just been really struggling to rotate like i said and with no front camber it really isn't eager to rotate like you want it to the rear camber is the same as before it's around 1.6 degrees so 2 to 2.1 degrees front and 1.6 degrees in the rear i think that should definitely help the car turn a little better plus with the lsd and the sway bars i just think all around it'll be a much better handling car now keep in mind, I have done other performance mods. So as you guys also should have seen by now, the car is full bolt-on. I've got an intake, charge pipe, intake manifold upgrade, the Kelford cams, it's still on the stock turbo, but you know, I've done a bunch of modifications since the last time where I was just running a stage one tune. So I am on a custom tune now, but we dialed things back for a pump gas map just for the track. So it's gonna be running on 93 octane, nothing crazy. Just something with linear torque, nice, easy throttle modulation that should help me get the best performance out of the car and hopefully set the best times possible. 
So that's not really an advantage here. I mean, it wasn't a part of the goals to get back to my track day. I wasn't trying to make more power, but I do think that, you know, with the custom tune, having nice linear torque and a good dialed in uh, boost curve should help it be a little bit more manageable through the turns as well. So we'll see how things go. So here's the new livery. Oh, got somebody's tire in my headlight. Uh, got the Kelford banner. Of course, my numbers. And then we've got some more stickers on the back for our other supporters. So, maybe more coming soon. I couldn't decide whether I wanted to put that on the window or on the door, but I still think it's pretty cool. Normally, I don't rice my car up like this, but we're just having fun, so. guys so like usual i missed way too much time yesterday to film videos while things were going on this is actually day two of being at the track but we're gonna go over a quick recap of how yesterday went so we got here i put on the apex wheels and tires the new continental extreme contact forces unfortunately they are extremely aggressive in the rear i was kind of surprised when i saw how those tires fit but there was no rubbing, no issues when I got on the track, so that was good. But yeah, it's definitely on the aggressive side, especially with stock suspension. Um, I think just, like I said, the rear suspension geometry allows it to camber in really well when you go around turns. So I didn't really have any rubbing issues. So we went ahead and went out on the track with all the new mods to kind of feel things out. I was trying a couple different things in certain spots just to see if I could pick up speed. And the car definitely has a lot more mechanical grip through the turns, which was really cool. So what I ended up getting into on the first session was a 122. So that's almost three seconds faster than my best time from earlier this year when the car was completely stock. So I'd say that definitely indicated the parts were working. So I was super excited to keep pushing the car Going into the next sessions, kind of the same deal, just trying to see how early I could get on the throttle, how late I could brake, how much more speed I could carry through the turns and really get the rotation that I wanted.
squeaking out a 121. And that was especially exciting because by the end of the day, I think I did about four or five 121 laps. So the car definitely has some good control. Um, I still see a couple areas for improvement, which is gonna be a never ending battle trying to chase the perfect setup on this car. But I think there's a little more in it, especially because some of those 121s I set when the temperatures got really hot later in the day. So I'm hoping this morning with the temperatures a little cooler, I'll have a little more power, hopefully get the tires up to temperature and feel it out a little more and maybe get a little bit quicker. So that's kind of where my head is at today. So we're gonna head back out there and see what we can do. All right guys, and as you can see, we are already headed home. So I continue to fail at this whole vlog thing. I tried to remember to film throughout the day and put my thoughts on camera, but I just kept forgetting and things kept happening. You know, I was really trying to keep my head focused on the performance on the track and what I wanted to do with the car. And so I just wasn't able to focus on the camera stuff. So we'll do a little bit of recap of day two. Now, like I said, we came into this knowing that we ran a 121 yesterday. And so my goal was to get faster. You know, what can I do to get into the 120s? And this morning, the temperatures were really good. It was like in the 60s, but you know, not too cold where like the temps on the track would be a problem for grip. So I was really hoping that that would help me squeeze out, uh, you know, another second. So we got on the track early in the morning, got everything ready. I rotated the tires just to make sure I had fresh tires on the left side since this track has a lot of right hand turns. And uh, here's how session one went. we got slightly deeper into the 21s but still not that 20 I was looking for I actually ran multiple 21s at this point and so I was getting seriously frustrated you might have seen it on my face a little bit you know sometimes I saw the time 
and I just dropped my head like 21, 22. You know, every time I thought I was doing something that would make the car faster, it still didn't quite squeeze out that 20. So I was talking to one of the guys about it in the pits and he reminded me that the Johns were here and the Johns are two professional, like certified drivers for Porsche of America. And they do these drives where they drive a stock 911 and a stock Cayman and they take you around on a lap so that you can kind of see how the cars perform. They're completely stock and of course, you know, it's hosted by the dealership. So a huge goal for them is to try to sell one. But just for us, obviously the drivers, we just want to see how they drive, where their driving line is, where they brake, where they get on the throttle, all that good stuff so that we can become better drivers and get better times. So even though my car isn't, you know, a 911 or a Cayman, I decided it might be a good idea to get in the car with them. Now, normally I'm not going to drive with people that are faster than me. Like I don't ride in cars that are faster than mine. Call it what you want, but that's just something that I don't like to do. But, uh, you know, in this case, I felt like it would be a good learning experience, so I tried it out. I didn't film or anything, you know, I just kind of told them what car I drive, and they were talking to me through the lab and gave me a couple of pointers. And of course, I noticed how they drive is very different for me. Their driving line is different than mine. And so I was kind of like taking mental notes throughout that trip. And then we went back out for session two, and you know, I've got all these ideas in my mind of things that I might be able to do to make the car faster. So here's how session two went. As you can see, I finally did it. I finally got my 20, and I actually didn't even notice it until I got off the track. So I was still frustrated that session because every time I remembered to check my time, it was still a 21 or a 22, but there still was that 120 in there that I saw when I got back to the pits, and I was just so happy. I couldn't believe it. I finally did it. So now, you know, I'm getting consistently in the 21s, you know, a couple of 122s, and I had that 120. 
So I'm wondering, you know, is there a 19 in the car? And of course, I still made a couple mistakes on that uh, 120 lap. It wasn't perfect. So I really just wanted to send it. Also this weekend, I had my gas light come on twice. So that pretty much was my confirmation that I can go about two sessions before my gas light comes on and then it's time to go get gas. And so this last session, this third session of the day, I knew my gas light was going to come on, but I was going home. You know, they actually do four sessions on Sunday and I leave after the third so that we can get home at a reasonable time. So I was like, this is my last session. When the gas light comes on, that'll be it. But I'm just gonna send it, you know, a little less gas in the car, we'll give it a little less weight. You know, that'll be to my advantage as well. So let's see what it can do. So this was kind of like my send it time to really see if I could squeeze out a 19 and uh, here's how session three went. bit rough and I probably should have thought about that a little more because obviously now temps are getting hotter today was even hotter than yesterday so that wasn't on my side so the car wasn't quite as powerful as it was in the cooler weather and I just started getting really frustrated again and I got stubborn on that last lap and you can see I just didn't let out I decided I was gonna stay in it as much as possible just to see if I could carry some speed through the turns and get that 19 you know I really just wanted to stay in it and I felt like the car was pretty composed generally but that last lap I just lost it um, luckily didn't damage anything didn't hurt anything under the car maybe my pride a little bit but uh ultimately the car was fine and that's what's you know the most important so uh yeah you know we're in the 20s at least that was still a really big win for me I think for a full weight you know relatively stock trim car that is a really good time 19s just kind of puts you in another level like people that run under 120s are really really fast uh, But I feel still pretty good about getting a 120 Now as far as my thoughts on this weekend, you know where the better performance came in one of course was being a better driver You know, I got teased a couple times by people for certain aspects of my driving that made me wonder like what can the car really do? especially like going through turns five and six I heard somebody say, I've never seen a car that can't go through turn five and six completely flat. And I was like, deal. So I tried it and I've been going maintenance throttle through those turns this whole time, but I just finally tried flooring it and it, it held. Like after that, I got really comfortable with it. I started doing it every time. The hardest thing after that was of course getting turn seven down because that's the sharpest turn on the track. But otherwise, you know, the car was just definitely performing closer to its limits because I was comfortable pushing it harder. So that was one big one, of course, the driver mod. Now, I think the next most important thing was the front camber. And the reason why that was important was because the car was still a little bit difficult to rotate, but I found that especially on some of those turns that had like a decreasing radius, I was able just to crank it and it responded. And a lot of that, again, is going to need to be confidence on my end that the car will do what I want it to based on my inputs. Because at first I was just like, man, it feels like it's not turning any better, but I really wasn't turning the wheel enough. You know, like I had to have that confidence that turning the wheel a little bit more wasn't going to make the rear end kick out. It wasn't going to make it start sliding or do something uncontrollable. It was going to put me in the position where I wanted to be. And so, you know, once I got comfortable with that and I felt the front tires really, you know, taking some grip and authority through the turns, I was able to place the car a lot better while I was going around the track. I didn't feel like I needed to brake as much and I just felt like overall I had more control. So that was really important for me. Uh, another thing, of course, I feel like the LSD allowed me to put down the power a lot earlier. I noticed it 
but you didn't feel it in the car, which I was kind of surprised by. I felt like I was gonna get more of that slingshot effect like what I was talking about. But in reality, the car was just composed, you know? In areas where putting throttle down, coming out of a turn would make it get really loose and, you know, uncomfortable. Now, the car just held, you know? And I was able to put down the power a lot sooner. I think that I need to, again, get more comfortable with that and try pushing it more and more especially coming out of, let's see, turn 10, uh, turn four, and turn seven, and probably turn eight too. Those are a couple areas where I felt like I was putting down the power way earlier than I felt like the car could handle, and it was handling it. And so I just needed to push that more and more and get past that mental block that, you know, the car's limits are lower than they actually are. So that was major for sure. And then the last thing I think that was probably the biggest contributor, of course, were the wider wheels and tires that gave me more grip everywhere. I was able to brake later, especially into turn seven. And the new tires, I think, are much more progressive than the RA71Rs. I'm probably going to stick with these for HPD duty. Even though a lot of people say the RA71s have more like downright grip, I just feel like the Continentals are a better compound and better overall tire for this kind of driver. You know, if you're like me, you're not really doing autocross or anything, you're just having fun. You want a tire that lasts several weekends, you know, several track days, and you want like a good progressive tire that allows you to approach the limit and hold the limit without completely losing it, um, unless you're like me and just get over ambitious. But generally these tires, they just work really well. They talk a lot, you know, people were commenting on me you know my tires were squealing and stuff and when i got off the track they said they could hear me coming around screaming around turns but uh yeah it's good you know the feedback is good that gives you an idea of where you are in the tires grip and overall profile so you know where you can push and where you just need to hang and be patient i do feel like the sway bars helped but maybe it wasn't as noticeable as the other upgrades especially the switchback going from two to three to four uh as i pushed it a little bit more the car was definitely composed um, so I guess I didn't really notice it, but it definitely was faster and it settled down much more quickly than it used to. Whereas it used to feel like the whole car was wallowing back and forth. And then that assisted in me being able to put down the power earlier with the LSD and stuff like that. So yeah, I guess definitely the sway bars worked. It was kind of like the silent killer, but ultimately another great weekend. And I think just a great example of showing what the 340 is capable of. So yeah, we'll be doing more of these in the future. Again, thank you to all of the partners and everybody that helped me put this build together. H&R, Bimmer Network, Apex Wheels, um, Motorsport Hardware, you know, all the guys that have come together and helped me improve the handling and performance of the car. I truly appreciate it. Thank you to Kelford Cams, Odin Tune, you know, everybody that threw me some performance modifications for the engine, even though I didn't really turn up the car for my track day. I think it definitely just increased the safety net so I didn't have to worry about all of those issues potentially causing the car to go down. And yeah, again, just thank you to everybody that's been watching these videos. You guys are making this possible as well. Please shop with the people that support me. You know, all of their modifications and upgrades work well. They offer great deals to our enthusiasts and not many people, you know, have options for platforms like ours. So as things continue to grow, we get excited, but it's nice to support the people that have been there since day one. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I hope this helps. And if you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below.